Welcome back, goalies. We are here again today on the DIY Goalie Podcast, and we're going to be talking all things goalie gear today. So I've got Ray McGurr with us, who is a 10-year vet when it comes to retail gear experience, and he spent uh, five years with Hockey Monkey, so he's going to kind of be giving us some information and some insight on that side of things. How are you doing today, Ray? Nice. We're uh, we're living the dream here. You know, it took a it took a second for us to get connected here, but uh, you know, glad to be here. Yeah, glad to have you. So, why don't you kind of give us a little bit of a background about yourself? Uh, kind of tell us, you know, where you've been, what you've done, and uh, how many pucks you've stopped on a Saturday <laughs> night beer league game. So, <laughs> thankfully, no Saturday night games. Uh, you know, we you know keep those open oh. for uh, for the bars. But um, no, um, there you I've go. been yeah. Uh, I mean, uh, I'm I just turned thirty this year. I've been playing goalie for about um, about twenty three years now. Uh, kind of skate out just because it's fun to. Um, but uh, yeah, like you said, um, I've been ten years into the retail game. Uh, most recently with uh, Monkey Sports uh, over here in Jersey. Um, I'd also worked at a, a um, smaller store called the Sports Exchange, uh, which, you know, if anybody's listening in the, you know, Monmouth County area, that was the uh, the place to be. It was a, you know, a new and used uh, store. So, you know, if you were just starting out or, you know, maybe you got into the game late and you didn't feel like spending $3,000 on everything, uh, you'd ra- you know, rather than that, you'd spend about five 600 and you're geared up head to toe. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, it's always good to have those mom and pop kind of used shops, and now everything's marketplace too. So. Yeah, I mean, I, I I did get the skate sharpener from there before we closed, so I got a I got that chilling out in my garage, the little you know three head blade masters. So call nice. me up for sharpening. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, there you go. If anyone's in the area, <laughs> there you go. All right, so we'll dive in here. So um, I know you've gotten. Uh, probably quite a few goalie parents you know beer league goalies kind of go through your mitts so mm-hmm. what are kind of some of the things that um you see that are pretty common mistakes maybe that uh that people make when it comes to gear sizing and gear selection um biggest thing is and especially more so for younger kids but you do tend to see with with some beer league guys but uh uh, too big of gear, uh, especially uh, leg pads, uh, sticks to an extent, um, and even even skates too. Like you know, with parents, you know, the big thing is you know, oh, my kid's gonna grow out of them in a year. Um, can we get them Ooh. this much bigger? And you know, the general rule of thumb is like you know, like a half size. You know, say you know, you you put your foot on a Brannock or you know that the Bauer scanner like what we had at Monkey. Um, you know, say they're eight-year-old kid scans at a size four, um, they're going to want to try and get a five. And the general rule of thumb is typically a half size. Um, you know, there are kind of tricks to see how much room you have in the skate, you know, whether it's taking the footbed out of the skate uh, or having them kind of tap their toe all the way into the uh, front of the toe box. And if you can get a finger uh, in between the their Achilles and the heel and the, you know, the back part of the skate, one finger is typically where you'd want to go. Anything more than that, it's just extra space. You know, they you know they look like clown shoes uh, for skaters or goalies. You know, it's especially for goalies um, and younger kids that don't necessarily have the muscle memory to push all that gear. If their skates are too big and their feet are swimming around in that skate, they're they're gonna have a tough time moving all the gear around. So, um, mainly skates. Uh, but I would say the biggest thing. Um, are uh, leg pads and uh, sticks. Um, with sticks, it's a little more kind of recent, you know, maybe the last six to seven years. Uh, pads had also changed probably eight to ten years ago. Like, me, you know, I mean, I'm out of high school uh, 12 years now, and back then I wore a 34 plus one-inch pad, and now I'm a 32, 31, depending on the brand. So, you know, how they fit them has changed. Um a you know a huge way um and then with sticks it was kind of you know you just stood there holding it you know just standing up and you're like okay it's good but then when you go on your butterfly and your elbows up here like this you know that that 25 26 inch paddle you know they're not doing it anymore but i would say pads <laughs> and sticks for sure 
Yeah, guilty as charged as a guy who's on a good day, 5'11". I was rocking the 36 plus ones and the uh, 26 inch paddle. So, you know, worked for me back oh then, I guess, to an extent. Yeah, but, uh, I'm, 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 five, yeah. I'm 5'11 myself, uh, 32 inch pad, 23 inch thick. Wish I did yeah. it 10 years yeah. earlier. <laughs> yeah, there you go. I always just uh, tell myself that uh, I have long legs, so that's my uh, excuse. <laughs> yeah, hey. Yeah, so, it, 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 it's, so, all, it's all body type too, for sure. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So what are kind of some of the things maybe that might be, uh, you know, considered commonplace, but, you know, are actually maybe a bit of a myth, um, you know, kind of like, you know, some some things that people believe are, are to be the case, but actually aren't in real or realistically? Yeah. Um... I mean, I guess, you know, I don't want to pick on you here, but I guess going to the pads thing where, you know, like I'm yeah. dealing with a guy who's, you know, 5'8 to 5'11, you know, anywhere in between there. And they're like, oh, I need like a, I need a 34, 35 inch pad because uh, I'm small and it helps me cover the five hole. When in reality, you know, when those pads are too big and the, the thigh rises um, are not even just overlapping, but they're just colliding all the time. Um, it actually kind of, you know, again, does you a little bit more harm. And then for all, for all us, especially us shorter goalies, it's, um, kind of with butterfly, um, coverage, it's, it's actually where your knee lands on that block. So, you know, say, you know, you and I said, you know, you were yeah. both five eleven. um, you were rocking a 36, you said, or, you know, and I was rocking a 34, but back then, <laughs> You would measure, yeah. you know, when you had your skates on, when you go down into a butterfly, your knee, you know, if, if this is your knee block here, here's the top, here's the bottom. 12, 10, 12 years ago, people wanted you to land right in the middle. So it was just kind of how you did it. Nowadays, you want to be just about a finger's length or two from the top of the block. So when you do drop, you can actually get your knees in tighter this way and get the tops of those pads to... um to connect and then seal that butterfly because now when you are higher up on that um on that knee stack you know your your knees aren't going to be spread apart so anything you know that hits that uh the thigh rise directly nothing's just going to fold that pad in or you know you know you, you get those squeakers every now and then so now with them being higher up you're bringing your knees in tighter tops of the pads are hitting much easier um mobility uh, increases and again more so that butterfly coverage but yeah the biggest myth i would say is that going bigger on the pads just to cover the five hole it it you know this it's not you know 2003 anymore you know like yeah guys like jaguar yeah. with like the the massive knee pads and you know like granted he had a very narrow um butterfly but you know again a lot of these guys now like uh you know they're pushing six four to six six they're in actually relatively smaller gear because with how fast the game is, you know, you, you don't want to be, uh, you don't want to be behind on anything. And with those, with the smaller pads, you're kind of getting the point from point A to point B a lot easier. And I noticed that too, is, you know, when I started downsizing. Yeah, I know. Um, I know back when I played my first year of junior A and Dustin Schwartz was, uh, was our goalie coach there. He was mm -hmm. working with Ben Scrivens at the time, who was actually experimenting with, a with a no thigh rise pad, like at all. Interesting. And he was, uh, he was doing that for a bit when he was with the Marlies. So, um, I can definitely see that there's <laughs> kind of been that shift towards the, the smaller gear and kind of, I mean, it doesn't help too that, uh, that the rules and regulations have changed in terms of uh what what you can get away with at that level but exactly but yeah no yeah. for sure you can definitely see yeah so we kind of <laughs> touched on it when it came to the skates and stuff but when it comes to the younger goalies then like how much should you account for future growth? Because like you said, a lot of the parents, that's kind of what they're mostly worried about. They don't want to mm -hmm. be going through a different set every two or three months. And I don't blame them, but where, where's that line? But Yeah, where's that line between, you know, too much and just right? Um, There's kind of a couple ways to go about it. Um, And another thing that I would actually tell parents, the 
bigger thing to plan for is not necessarily when they grow, but it's also how they grow too. Cause you can get a yeah. guy like, you know, there, there was actually one, one of my former coworkers, um, he was about six foot one, but his entire, like he was this much torso and this much legs. So him and I actually, <laughs> me being five, you know, five ten, five eleven, him pushing six one, we actually both wore the same size uh, leg pads. So <laughs> there's a way, you know, like I said, you have to, you, there's ways to go about it when you're in the moment. Um, like I said, kind of with the whole knee stack thing. For grown adults, you want to be as close to the top as you can. For younger kids, when it comes to leg pads, where that knee lands, again, you know, if this is the block here, grown adults are here. Growing kids are just above that middle line. Um, and there are also ways, with, especially with leg pads, because that's kind of the, you know, the, the big chunk of, um, of, um, of a ticket, you know, when you're walking into a retail store. Um, there are ways to adjust, you know, to make pa bigger pads play smaller or smaller pla pads should be play bigger. Uh, whether it's that strap behind your knee, um, I know a lot of companies are going away from it, but the bootstraps on the pads, um, you know, like for me and for me, for instance, I wear, um, I have two sets of, uh, gear, um, a warrior RG six pro and, um, Bauer hyperlights, the warriors came with, you know, their elastic heel strap that obviously is removable. The Bowers don't come with one at all. Now on the Supreme pads, they do have a slot for a heel strap. And if you order custom Bauer, you can get a, um, whether it's their, um, the, uh, the elastic or a leather bootstrap, you can have those added on, but you're going into stores now. And a lot of these companies are getting away from the bootstraps mainly because same thing with us, you know, 10, 15 years ago, you used to go super tight on that bootstrap and you'd want, you know, like to pull the pads down as much as you can, or have them play as tight to your leg as you can, where nowadays, you know, as guys went looser on the straps and now obviously all those straps are gone. Um, the pads play a lot looser and they sit higher up on the skate. So, um, whether, you know, the pads have that bootstrap or not, say a kid's starting to get a little high up on that knee block, or maybe they're coming off the top of it. They can take that knee strap, drop it down to the, uh, down on their calf. It frees up a lot of states on the knee block. Uh, also, you know, some, some goalies wear them already like that, just depending on what kind of knee guard they wear, whether it's a, a bigger bulky one, like, a like a CCM or a warrior, or if they're using, um, uh, like a Bauer or, um, you know, maybe like a pass out, you know, some of these other, uh, you know, third party companies that make knee pads that are a little smaller. Um, when they drop down that strap to the, the, uh, cast, it does free up a lot of space. So, you know, if they're kind of on the brink there and they typically wear that strap, um, behind the knee, they can drop it down to the calf and be more than okay. All righty. So then, uh, but yeah, so like mainly guys with, if they have like bigger knee pads and they wear their straps down to the calf, they kind of already do that. But for kids growing, most of them are kind of putting them behind the knee. Uh, they can just bring that strap back down and, um, and they'll get some more time out of them. Or if the pads have a bootstrap, like a warrior, you can, um, you can Lundy loop them through your skate, makes pads sit up a little higher, maybe change your toe ties. Um, there's a couple different ways around it. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Yeah, no, that's good. Um, what about when it comes to like, you know, something like a chest protector or, you know, the pants kind of some of that upper body, uh, upper body stuff, like what can we look for to try and get, uh, the most out of that while still being protective too? Um, a lot of the times it's proportional, um, more so kind of like when you're sizing a kid up and all that, but, um, with uh with pants i'm under the impression that like pants are okay to upsize on you know for me like yeah. i i wear a small uh with the warriors just because they they fit kind of big anyways like they're very wide um but i could do an intermediate in a ccm but again now if you are going bigger on the pants now that you can you can tuck your chest protector in, I don't know if you do it. I do it on mine just because it's of how wide yeah. the pants are. But yeah. uh, a lot of the the chest sectors, for the most part, are are all adjustable in different ways. Whether it's 
Velcro the arms to pull them down or pull them up. Um, the bodies, you know, you know, sometimes it's a Velcro in here or along the back, you can have them sit lower, pull them up higher, you know, cinch them down to tighten it or loosen it. Um, but a lot of times, like, you know, for parents sizing up kids, like a lot of that stuff's proportional. So it's, if it looks too small, it's probably, like, especially a chest protector, it's probably too small. Um, yeah. or if it's too big, then yeah, you know, you could wait a little bit on, uh, on little Jimmy wearing it for sure. <laughs> Yeah, for sure. And what we'll do is uh, what I'll link up in the show notes too, because we have a, a handful of uh, sizing articles too. So we'll link those up in the show notes if you guys are looking for a little bit more information on how to size some of this stuff. Mm -hmm. um, so when it comes to, because especially, you know, goalies getting into the position, you know, for the first time or still pretty new to the position. A lot of times we want to go more of the used gear route because, mm. you know, it just makes more sense financially. Um, what are some of the things to look for to make sure that it's in good shape? It's good to use um, outside of just the sizing stuff in general. Like how do we look for kind of that quality? Um, get another Thing for a couple different ways um big thing is um you'll see kind of wear and tear um on the top of the thigh rise you know maybe from some overlap um in the knee blocks as well um you can kind of see with some softer pads like you know some ccm like uh pre lefave leaving for true uh since they've stiffened up the knee blocks but a lot of those older ccms you see on a lot older bonds too where that knee block where it's say it's supposed to be this thick there's just a giant divot where you know where where the previous owner's knee was landing yeah. the, um, the memory foam effect it, it, exactly <laughs> yes um also too on how old the gear is too um and that could also kind of entail with sizing as well too if i'm looking to buy a a bower pad from 10 years ago it's probably gonna fit differently than the bower pad does today where yeah. you know like an old okay. reactor 6033 plus one is going to fit more like a 32 in say a hyperlight um maybe in a mock or the the new shadow that just came out um on how old the gear is that'll kind of tell you like sizing like an old 34 is going to fit more like a 33 or a 32 by today's standards uh the other big wear areas are like right at the bottom of the boot where that part of the pad would uh, make contact with the ice first. Um, Velcro is another kind of obvious one where a lot of them, you know, you can replace the Velcro or you could just stitch new Velcro in. Um, or somehow if you find a pad that is just all leather straps, you know, you might, it might be tough finding the straps for them, but uh, <laughs> the bigger wear areas are going to be like that top part of the pad, uh, the knee landing, and right at the inside of the boot, I would say. Uh, as long as those are in like good shape, Obviously, on the face of the pad, you don't want any like skate cuts or anything, um, unless they do say like you know there's a small skate cut here. Uh, but most of those you could fix with like a um, uh, super glue uh, pad skins as well. Um, you know that you know just like quick patch jobs like that. But if you see like a lot of those, or if you know the pads are pretty much beat to hell, then you know you could might be able to get something else, maybe a little bit better. You know, <laughs> might cost you a couple more bucks, but you know, I'd rather spend the extra hundred bucks on a better pad than something cheap, just, you know, just to get by. And, it's, you know, especially too, if it doesn't work for me and how I play, I'd, I'd rather have gear that is okay quality wise, but it works for me rather than maybe something better or worse that just doesn't fit my game at all. <laughs> so are there any like tests or anything like that, that we can kind of look for on some of this gear so i know like with the pads i mean probably less so nowadays but back in the day we all used to love grabbing the toe of the pad and the thigh rise and kind of squeezing the pad like an accordion yeah just pressing down and then, on them. yeah <laughs> and then like even for example like with gloves and stuff too like i know you can kind of test the integrity of the t to see if it's you know folding in pretty easily mm -hmm. like some of the older vons do i think even the newer vons do that too but are there kind of some 
tests to do to kind of measure like the internals of some of this stuff to make sure it's still in good shape and you're not dealing with a cracked plastic blocker board right. or anything um, like that? Uh, some of that stuff you can see, like probably more so with gloves, you know, whether it's the, the board of a blocker <laughs> or um, the in the, the palm of a catch glove. Like you see it, I, I actually see it more on... Uh, not newer, not this year's Bauer gloves, but the uh, the Hyperlite from last year. Um, saw it on a couple mock and and ultrasonic gloves, but the padding on the palm actually shifting up and in. So when you go to close it, rather than it almost closing fully like this, you kind of get that. There's it'll only close like like this. Yeah, so your fingers will stick out a little bit. Exactly. Yeah, that. Um, yeah. And then with the T of the gloves, I mean, I was kind of a you know, notorious for doing it too, where, you know, you take the, the bottom of the blocker board and kind of just press it in like that. <laughs> then you go yeah. to catch a puck and the T just completely, um, you know, folds in on you where nowadays, yeah. like, like I see kids do it all the time when I'm on the ice coaching and I'm like, guys, stop doing that. Stop leaving it in the thigh <laughs> rise you had. Use the sidewall yeah. of your blocker, flatten it. Don't cave it in, flatten it. So when you present yeah. your glove, it looks like this and not like this. But with yeah. pads, okay. it's, pads, it's kind of tougher because um, mainly it's like if, if say, if, you know, you have a buddy that's letting you try out his leg pads, um, say, you know, you're in, I'll just say, what, what, what Vaughn's in right now? Or if you're still in them or not? Well, I was more of a Brian's guy. Uh, so, Brian's guy, um, yeah. But, but my, last, my last set, because we got a deal through college, it was, so my current set would be E-Flex 2s. Okay, yeah. But so I, I was a genetic two fan. That was okay, my, yeah, so my like, go to. Yeah, so like those pads, especially the E Flex twos, those were a very soft pad where like yeah. nowadays it's like everyone's kind of going away from that and they're going more for that stiffer, yeah. uh hotter rebound. Like <laughs> I noticed it like I was always a um uh like Reebok, eventually uh into CCM, the double break revoke pads into my E Flex yeah. ones. Um, and I had tried some, some other pads, like, you know, the softer, like I actually, I've actually never tried anything Vaughn, but I did try some previous Brian's pads and that's actually kind of where I got into the stiffer pads. It was, I believe the sub zero two, I tried those and those things were like, for me that they felt like ironing boards, but <laughs> you know, yeah. in trying those and getting into, um, you know, once I started in Monkey, I we had the demo program, which they no longer offer. Um, I was in Brian's at the time. I had demoed out the Warrior G4s. And if you'd asked me 10 years earlier if I'd be in Warrior gear, I'd be like, hell no, like this this is just terrible. But now they have Pete Smith, who, <laughs> who actually used to work with Vaughn, and he actually designed the concept of the knee block. So we could actually thank him for having me blocked in, in all your pads. Um, but I'd tried them out and they were way stiffer than the Bryans and the G5s were actually coming out then. So when, uh, when I saw that, I'm like, okay, I kind of, I really see the benefit to this. I'm going to sell these Bryans. I believe they are optic ones order G5s with the stiffest thyroid option that they had. I still kept the break below the knee, but that was kind of the big thing, uh, going stiffer. And you'll, you'll kind of see that more and more where Vaughn's are getting progressively stiffer. Uh, the new Bryans are decently stiff, but not nearly as stiff as say like the Warriors, um, the uh, the Bowers, and even now the True stuff. Like their thigh rise is very very stiff. But when you're looking yeah. at kind of used stuff like that, it's it's kind of hard to tell. Like right now, you know, like if if I gave you a set of E Flex fours and you just press down on, them, you're like, okay, you know, they're soft, but how are they going to feel on the ice? So like with pad. You kind of got to get them on the ice gloves. You can kind of see right there, you know, like holes in the blocker palm, like you said, the T collapsing or the padding on, on the palm of the catch glove. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> no, that's good. Um, so we did touch on the stick and, uh, this is kind of the, uh, My favorite the hot thing. topic. My yeah, favorite. The hot topic. Favorite thing. So I know, you know, like I said, the, the sticks that I still have, I mean, I don't really play anymore. All that I do is coach, but, uh, you know, I've got the, the 26 inch paddle sitting in the, uh, the back <laughs> corner. 
And, you know, there's guys now that are like five, six inches taller than me rocking like a 24. So oh, yeah. how has that kind of changed? And like how much of it is personal preference as opposed to a proper sizing? So a um, couple different ways around it where um, kind of, you know, how when you and I would walk into a store, we would just grab a stick, stand there and hold it down on the, on the floor. <laughs> We're like, okay, yeah, it works. But as you had just said, you know, and even myself personally, um, kind of why I'm so-called rooting for the Florida Panthers this year in the cup final, or if they do make it to the cup, um, a local boy, Anthony Stolars, uh, grew up 15, 20 minutes away from me, um, played against him in high school. And, uh, he's around, you know, six, five, six, six. Somebody actually came into the store with one of his, um, his pro return true sticks. And I asked the kid, I was like, let me see this real quick. I brought it over to our, to the sticks and that thing measured perfectly to a 24 inch bower out yeah. off the shelf. So, you know, and I, I, I see it with parents all the time and I also see it too, both, you know, on the retail side and coaching side where, you know, parents are asking me like, Oh, uh, is his stick too small? Is there his pads too small? Whatever it is. Um, but the big thing with sticks is, as you now watch pretty much any of these goalies remaining in the playoffs, nobody's moving on the ice down kind of in that crouched, you know, ready position when the puck's out at the, at the, um, up at the point, they're up this way, their hands are out this way. And then once the shooter does get a little bit closer, they tend to lean more forward from the hips, hands come out this way and they're getting their head out on top of it. So rather than being back this way, with your hands at your side, rather than guessing where your hands are, with with everything being a lot more forward, your tracking is much much better. Like I, I started, you know, five years ago is kind of when I started downsizing. Actually, when I started um, at Monkey, I was still using twenty fives, and um, you know, I found a grabbed a twenty four. I'm just like, hey, you know what, we'll try it, and I noticed I had, I was getting burned underneath of um, my armpit and my blocker side with the 25. So I went down to the 24. It was still happening a little bit here and there, but I was kind of getting to it quicker. I went down to a 23 and was like, holy, like, this is money right here. So, like, with that smaller stick, I'm able to get my hands out, and rather than having to get my elbows kind of up this way, you're a little tighter here. And then, like I said, the biggest thing was was tracking pucks, because now rather than having your hands to your side and guessing where they are, you can see it right there in your peripheral, catch it right there, put that puck into the corner with your blocker. Um, and like you said, with all the pro guys, um, you know, Stoli being you know a friend of mine, and I used to work with his older brother Todd at the at the Tim Simon shop. Stoli's six six, Abrosky's six three ish and you know Rossi's kind of the um the poster child for this where he would take a 24 yeah. inch stick and i don't you know typically you know they're they're um those kind of squared off corners his are very very steep and he grips down very very well so it plays actually more like a like a 22 and a half or a 23 and again you know he's pushing you know six three pretty big guy but when you watch him move and this is actually also where I see that smaller stick being a very big um, advantage where um, going down in your post in RBH, you have your whole blade flat on each side, whether you know, you're know you on your glove side post or your blocker side post. So you can still get your stick into the passing lanes, but you're not jammed up. You could still get yeah. around that post um, on your blocker side or come a little further around when you're on your glove side. Um, and it's easier to put the pucks into um, into the corner using your stick when it is smaller like that because again you're not getting jammed up like that. So here's a tip for parents where you know if your five two kid five three kid is using a twenty four twenty five inch stick, you look at the heel, and if it's starting to crack there or if there's a very big wear area there, then it's a sign that you know, the stick's too big and you want to go smaller on it. So yeah. 
Yeah, that's that's definitely the biggest thing that uh, I mean. I wouldn't say I got into like arguments with with parents, but like <laughs> they keep asking me. And they're like, you know, my you know, little Jimmy's goalie coach says he needs a twenty four inch stick, and the kid's barely five one. I look at the parent. I'm like, like I don't even use that size. Here's why. Yeah. So yeah, you, know, you get a lot of older coaches that aren't necessarily caught up with how. I wouldn't say how the game is today, but with how all the equipment is. So, like, you know, you could ask 10 different coaches opinions on technique um, and equipment. Probably it's a good split of 50-50 where 50% of them are are experts in technique, where the other 50% are are, um, experts in the equipment. There's a very, very fine line of Mm. coaches that that are excellent in both of those ends. So, like... I wouldn't say I'm an expert, expert in technique. I mean, I'm still even kind of learning some <laughs> of the stuff today, but, yeah. but, you know, uh, but I like, I like working more with the kids with their gear. Cause yeah, they might slip up or something, or I mean, maybe they're not getting the proper, um, functionality of the pad. I'm like, or their sticks or their gloves, whatever it may be. I'm like, Hey, try this. You know, I, I have, you know, there's sessions where I'll be on the ice um in my pads gloves and stick and just doing you know like post integrations crease work and skating where i'm not really shooting and i have my stuff and i show the kids how to do the drill and then i see the kid who's using a stick that's too big and i'm like try mine go a little smaller and then they're like wow that actually helped out a lot you know so <laughs> so that yeah, seems to kind sure. of be and the think- trend yeah, I think there's something to be said too about the um, the extra weight too, because the the longer your stick is, the more weight it is, and especially for younger kids, they already have a a hard time, you know, dealing with the the lumbering yeah. stick in their hand. Exactly. Yeah. Up. Well, thank. I mean, so, thankfully, all these sticks are they're stupid light well, now. Dude. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> I mean, hell, I was. Yeah. I was even using. The, I was even using a, a 21 inch junior true stick for a while. Like, like it, it, it looked like Bobrovsky, where the you know if I'm just standing up in my stance, the blade almost came like to my knee, and everyone's looking yeah. at me like, how the hell do you use that? I'm like, it, it, it works. It, it works. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. yeah. No, for <laughs> sure, and that's. uh I think it carries over from when I played because I had real no preference on gear whatsoever. But mm. yeah, I'm I'm that coach that I can go go on for days about technique. But when it comes to gear, I'm like, ah, I don't know, go talk to your local <laughs> retail guy. Exactly. So, so to stick with the stick for a little bit longer and bring up another hot topic, but I know there are a lot of coaches out there that are very anti cutting down the shaft and Mm. there's the thought process of it affecting the balance of the stick or all of that now Mm -hmm. i know that it's documented that there isn't really such a thing as the manufactured balance of the stick but i kind of wanted to get your take on it because Mm -hmm. i know there are some guys out there that are pretty adamant that you should not cut down the shaft of the stick um, yeah, you know, like the actual shaft, not the paddle. Cause yeah, like, not the yeah, paddle, yeah. but so, the actual shaft, the actual shaft. Yeah. So, um, it's actually something I've, I've played around with a lot where, um, there, are, you know, some companies, you know, and also too with paddle sizing, you know, like you'll get shorter <laughs> handles, like, like the, the true sticks I'm using right now, I have a, the project X and a hazardous <laughs> PX. They're both 23 inch sticks. <laughs> and if I'm just standing up on the, you know, just on my, in my shoes, the stick probably came up to just under my chin where it's down to my Adam's apple um, in skates. Now, um, I would actually take some other sticks that the handles were longer and I would cut them probably like just below my nose. Uh, so they were probably about chin to you know Adam's apple height. Um, because like, like you said, it really doesn't mess with the balance at all like i actually put extend i put a, a one inch extension in the in the sticks that i have now just because they they felt really really good but they they just felt a touch too short when it came to playing the puck but you see guys like excellent puck handling goalies um one that really really comes to mind is Braden holpe he would if he was just standing you know like just waiting to take a shot 
the butt end of his stick came up to like his shoulder. But then he would go behind the net and play the puck, and you know he looked like uh, I don't want to say he looked like Connor McDavid, but he could he could handle the puck really really well. Yeah. So I'm I'm an advocate for it. I love it. Um, like I said, it's just kind of you can kind of pull the stick in a little bit more, especially with the tech the technology and all these sticks now. Like like the you know this Project X stick I'm using right now is it shoots like a player stick. Like there's so much flex in it. I can pull it in, lean in on it, and just and just send pucks. Where you know my my deep my guys kind of yell at me sometimes. Where like I I like to play the puck, and they look at me and they're like, just leave it, leave it. And the last second, <laughs> I see somebody on the far blue line, and I'm just I'm I'm sending it no matter yeah. what. And then when it yeah, works, they, when it works, they look at me and they're like, oh, nice pass. <laughs> yeah, although they're probably mad that the one time they actually you know came back to a puck for once that uh they didn't even need to so <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah uh, it, it happens yeah. you know it d- depends on the game like if, if we're blowing a team out 6-1 i'm i'm gonna go for that pass or if it's a kind of tighter game i'll be like eh, you know unless i really really have a beat on it um give it to the guys who can really pass the puck <laughs> yeah for sure and yeah that's that's i think the main advantage to being able to cut down the stick because it makes mm-hmm. puck playing a lot easier i think the only real disadvantage to it um i mean you can obviously get too short that it just doesn't feel good but mm-hmm. um the main disadvantage is just that reach when you go for a full-fledged poke check but i don't even know yeah. how many kids are doing yeah. that these days so. yeah. <laughs> when you're looking for I guess the right gear to get into. So whatever brand or model, um, Mm -hmm. what are the things to kind of think of to be looking for, to be able to find the right fit? Cause I know like, you know, you got some guys who swear by nothing but Vaughn and then you get, you know, you have some guys that just, you know, can't get out of a true cause you know, for whatever reason. So mm-hmm. how do you kind of find the right fit for you? Um, I suggest to people to try everything. So, you know, if you came into the store and you're like, Hey, I need some pads or I need a full getup. Like, you know, if we're open for 10 hours in a day, if, if I have to spend eight hours with you picking gear, like I will absolutely do that. So oh, I would say to try on everything. Um, say, you know, like for me, I kind of made the mistake where I, I wanted to try the uh, the new Bauer stuff. Granted, I got I got some older specs. The only thing new was like the the Vapor ninety gloves that I got. But um, I tried it. You know, it's great stuff. It's just kind of not really for me. But um, but I suggest just try everything. You know what? Like there are guys that like you said they swear by Vaughn, Brian, um, CCM. Uh, you know, everybody's got their brands, but you have to, there's no perfect pad for everyone. Like you and me, if we both put on a Vapor Hyperlite 2, I'll probably love it. You might absolutely hate them. Where, you know, some guys like those really softer pads, like, you know, like older Vaughn pads, or, you know, maybe they order custom Vaughn or Brian's and they just want them soft as they can get. Um, but in trying to find what works for you, like I said, it's it's a big trial and error thing. Take the time. You know, are you more of a, a narrow butterfly? Are you a wider butterfly? Because um, that kind of entails with that where we'll just use Bauer as an example. Like you see a guy like um, um, Jake Ottinger. He's got a very, very wide butterfly. Uh, he is uh, granted. He's still wearing ultrasonic pad, to my knowledge. It could. It's either mock or ultrasonic, um, and he has a very wide butterfly. So sorry, I got a little cat here walking around. Um, he's got a very <laughs> wide butterfly. Where you know another guy, kind of you know older guy, but Jaguar, he had that very narrow butterfly. So. If he were still playing today, he would probably be in something more like a vapor pad that has a little bit more curve to it. Where you get a guy like Ottinger, or Lundqvist, uh, Vassy, he's you know he's still in a Supreme build pad. They have very very wide butterflies, and those pads are stiff as boards. So when they do seal, they look more like this. Where a lot of those narrower butterflies, again, you know, it's 
kind of you have to cater it to how you play. So I I yeah. tend to think I'm kind of right in the middle where I do like a stiffer pad, but I want a little bit of a curve to it. Um, and then um, there are other guys that they're just like, like uh, I've heard on other podcasts. Um, I believe you know. Well, I'll shout him out here. Uh, one of GGSU's legends, uh, Jorg Agenpa. He's the um, he's the NHL um, true guy. He's the true yeah. guy. Yes. So yeah. like, you know, like, yeah, you know, I think he, he had said a guy like, um, I forget what podcast he was on. It was with a couple of guys from like Calgary or something, but, uh, what was it? Um, he had a guy like John Gibson, he would go through like 20 sets of gloves or something and he would get a new glove every, I don't know, 10 days or whatever it is. He's like, but there's nothing special. And it's, it's a lot of older specs where he'll look at him and be like, and eh, you know, yeah, it works. Where then you get a guy like Carey Price who will like if you know, if you put on a glove and it doesn't feel right, you're not gonna use it. Same thing with guys with, with skaters with their skates, like uh um oh, who was the old guy in Minnesota, West Walls. Like he really he actually retired because CCM couldn't make his tax skates, <laughs> you know, he couldn't get comfortable yeah. in the newer skates, so he's like, Ah, you know what? I'm done. So yeah. it's, a, it's a matter of kind of finding what you like. And, you know, you know, you're an E-Flex 2 guy. If you walked in here and you're like, hey, I want E-Flex 6s because I'm a CCM guy, I'm going to tell you, no, you really probably don't want E-Flex 6s. You're going to want um, Catalyst uh, PX3s from True because Lefebvre is now building for True. Lefebvre yeah. built for Coho Reebok CCM famously, and now they're in True. So you get a guy like Marc Andre Fleury, who's been in coho stuff since he was in junior. CCM is going to walk up to him. Hey, here's this Axis Two pad. It's completely different from anything you've ever used, but you're a CCM guy. He's going to be like, and eh, no, I want, I want what got me here. So that's that's also yeah. kind of why you see all those guys that were um, Reebok CCM guys that are now in the True Gear, just because it's the same people making them. It's just True's paying that. Uh, they're paying that you know, ticketing, uh, the licensing fee for the NHL for advertising. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Mm -hmm. So we've talked a lot about the pads. We've talked a lot about the sticks. One thing that, uh, you know, comes up a lot when it comes to gear is the gloves, the glove breaks glove more breaks. specifically. Yes. So let's, uh, let's dive into that and kind of what's the difference between them and who are they best suited for? <laughs> All right, so for you know, for anyone that does not know, there um, uh, it's three categories in three ways. There's a 600 break, a 590, and a 580. Um, 600 was kind of introduced by CCM to lure Carey Price <laughs> out of the Vaughn oh. stuff into the CCM gear. Um, when your hand is in the glove, I mean, I don't, I'm not a 600 guy, so I don't have one to show you. But the 600 is going to be more that kind of fingertip to fingertip closure. Um, most commonly used as like a, like a baseball glove. So if, if goalies also play baseball, most likely they're using that 600 break. So, um, you can get a custom through, uh, through CCM true. Um, if you're looking at Bauer gear, it's going to be the, um, off the shelf, it would be the Supreme line. Um, you know, so the moth now shadow, um, 600 is also, uh, the SLR four from Vaughn. Um, they they kind of categorize them differently. There's you know 60 degree, 75 degree, 90 degree. Um, Brian's, I believe it was the. I gotta remember, I haven't worn a Brian's glove in a while. I believe it was the <laughs> optic. The optic was the 600 break. Um, the genetic. Like, again, you could also get these all like kind of custom, but just okay. for you know for for argument's sake. If you're looking on a shelf, say you have the three Bauer gloves, 600 is going to be your supreme. Uh, the 590 break, this is probably the most common among NHL um, use. So it's the 600 is that fingertip to fingertip. 590 is almost kind of pulling it into the base of your thumb. So, you know, if you were looking on the shelf, um, Bauer it would be the uh, the Hyperlite 2. Um, older CCM gloves, like the, uh, the premier gloves. I don't know if you're using any premieres, but, um, those kind of Reebok era gloves were five nineties. Yeah. Uh, the genetics, um, from, uh, from Brian's, which is now the iconic, 
uh, Warriors, Gloves, Off the Shelf. Um, they're kind of their own thing, but um, they have that 75 degree, which is going to be that 590. Uh, Vaughn, you're going to be looking at the uh, Velocity line. Um, and again, you can kind of get them custom through everybody. You know, Bauer, CCM, True, Warrior, Brian's Vaughn, uh, through everybody. Um, now with the 580, this one's kind of, um, you could almost say it's a, like a folklore kind of thing. Um, Coho had made it initially for Patrick Waugh to catch a puck up in his ear when he would drop down. So now that, so, you know, 600s to the fingertip, uh, 590 to the base of the thumb. That 580 is going to be that full hand. It's a 90 degree closure. So, um, there was actually a good thing with, uh, I believe it was Ingle Mag. Um, they had talked to Stuart Skinner when he, in junior, he was using a 600. When he got to Edmondson, he was using a 590. And then it was actually Mike Smith who turned him yeah. on to the 580. He looked at him, he was like, what are you doing? You Use this. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, I remember that story. Yeah. So now, and, um, you know, Bobrovsky, uh, Holpe, and uh, now that with, you know, if you're just looking at a goalie that is using a 580, the big tall tail sign is how the T is going to, when they close it, kind of bend in towards their body. So, you know, if you're catching that puck in your ear, it's the, the pocket kind of pulls more this way. It's a very upright kind of with how uh, the technique is getting nowadays with that very upright um, hand positioning. Um, the 580 is also great for uh, for puck handling because you're kind of just grabbing the stick like that Man. and going. Um, I for, I've, I use the uh, the 90 degree, you know, the 580 break from Warrior. I also have the Vapor 90 from uh, from Bauer. Still kind of getting used to the Bauer. The the Warrior, it's it's the same shape, but it's a little different as far as like kind of the hand placement. Um, but now, you know, more and more people are asking about it. So retailers are going to actually start stocking them more, whether it's uh, Hyperlite 2, Vapor 90. Um, Brian's, you know, they just came out with the uh, the Eclipse line, which it's granted, it's just gloves, but it's that, you know, I wouldn't call it a five, like a real 580. Like it has that, that bend in the, you know, almost like that duck bill kind of look with the T. Uh, but again, you know, you can get it through, um, in my opinion, I'd say true will save probably makes the best 580. Uh, but you can get that, you know, through everybody. Uh, Vaughn, I believe that I think it's like the XP is kind of that it's not a full 90 degree closure, but it's similar to that. Um, don't quote me on that, but, uh, but yeah, yeah. The, the eclipse is going to be that pseudo 580 vapor 90, anything true CCM 580, whether it's custom or off the shelf, but the 580 is kind of the, um, it's almost like a golden goose kind of now, uh, you know, yeah. more and more people are, are asking about it and, and now also using it. Yeah. Yeah. That dark horse that's kind of coming out of the weeds and <laughs> yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. Well, over the, yeah. So over the course of the years then, since I know you've been doing this for about 10 years, but uh, I've been kind of interested in things a little longer than that too. But yeah, what do you think is kind of the biggest <clears throat> changes that you've seen in terms of the way that gear is built, in terms of the way that, you know, it feels and, and all of that <laughs> stuff? Because it's, it's pretty crazy. I mean, just alone the weight of things these oh, yeah. days are <laughs> the, yeah i'd <laughs> say the ridiculous the biggest, the biggest thing is that. it's probably the weight game um i mean yeah you, you really see it more with sticks um you're, you're seeing it a little bit more with pads where um obviously you know like vaughn for instance you know instead of having five or six leather straps on the pad it's two or three velcros and and you're good so that already there reduces the weight a ton um the core materials of the pads, like, like, I mean, Bauer probably, they, they really, really, really changed the game, you know, with, um, the, uh, the Odin initiative, um, which ended up becoming the one F, um, you know, with that, uh, the cortex skin that they use where like one of my old coworkers who he was in Vaughn, you know, super soft pads, like, like Jonathan quick. And now he's in, in, uh, vapors. He would rather than dropping down to a butterfly and making a save off his leg and having that rebound like a foot away from him. It's like he could put him out past center ice, just kicking the rebound out. So, yeah. um, 
a lot of those core materials um, that are, again, you know, they, the big thing is they're trying to chase that really lightweight material. Um, but you also don't want to compromise the, um, the durability of the stuff. So like, yeah. like I said, I, between the two sets that I use, um, in my opinion, I would say the warriors are lighter, if not probably the lightest gear on the market right now. Um, and you know, they just released G seven stuff. I would love to get my hands on a set. Um, because, uh, just feel wise and weight wise, like this entire past men's league season, I played, I started out with the Bowers that I got. Um, and then towards playoffs, I actually switched out the Bauer glove for the warrior glove. And then we ended up getting into the championship. We hadn't beaten this team. You know, they went undefeated the entire season. So of course, in my head, I'm like, I got to change all, all my stuff. So I went back to the warrior <laughs> stuff, just felt a lot lighter, you know, which moving a lot better. Mm -hmm. Um, so that was kind of the big thing with that. Um, the other changes, like you see, you know, if you can look into it with true, uh, both with the catalyst and now the new hazardous pad, um, that very, very thin, but insanely stiff thigh rise, you know, they're, they're putting a lot of carbon fiber into that. So you don't get that, um, that collapsing of the thigh rise, you know, in your butterfly making save, uh, which also now with that, that's helping you seal the pad much better to the ice. <clears throat> so better seal, better mobility. Um, again, now without, um, compromising the, um, the integrity of the pads. Um, other things that I would say are probably, you know, people are chasing and changing. It's, uh, obviously, you know, it starts up at the NHL where you don't have guys that look like refrigerators with their chest protectors. Now they're, you know, they're a lot more streamlined. Um, yeah. the big battle with that is, do I want the coverage? Do I want the mobility? But I really want both. Um, Warrior, you know, I'm not, I don't want to toot their horn, but like, I don't wear their chest protector personally. I wear a Vaughn, but at least, especially for younger kids, it's very squared off. So you get that coverage, but the arms, you know, again, being very adjustable, they're super, super mobile. So I would probably tend to think that some companies are going to try and go more towards that where like they're still streamlining the, um, the floaters and the shoulders and everything. But they don't want to sacrifice that, you know, that coverage where, um, you know, you see a lot of the a lot of NHL guys are in those um, like the CCM NHL pro units. Uh, I know Bobrovsky's, I believe he's in like a in a John Brown, which I've never worn Brown, but I've you know I've seen amazing things and I would love to try them, yeah. especially with how kind of customizable they are, you know, with the yeah the internal bicep stuff around the ribs. Like you know, we saw the video of the one rep just kind of standing there like this and two guys were just taking baseball bats to his chest. <laughs> yeah. He's like, he's just standing there, not taking a, you know, like it's nothing. But I, yeah, I, yeah I, like I, just streamlining all that stuff is probably going to be the biggest uh, change I would see. It starts obviously at the NHL and then it gets down to the, uh, the, the, the peasants like us at, uh, at retail. <laughs> yeah. I, uh, big game changer for me. Cause the last chest protector I got was the, uh, the pass out and I got the NHL pro pack or, or whatever with it. And mm. it was a game changer that I could have an XL body, but large arms so that I could actually fit it, but still. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> see, like cover more like for me, like I'm, I'm a little bit more, uh, I mean, I don't have like a, I feel like I'm pretty even body wise, but like I wear yeah. an extra small in a body could i do small arms yeah but i kind of i cinch them up a little bit higher just so they um so i can move my hands a little bit better um if yeah. anything too i mean you know you're talking game changers um i'd say the biggest game changer maybe it's just because i'm 30 and i'm used to four millimeter blades but <laughs> um i recently switched over from the custom two-piece true goalie skate you know with the rivet or with uh with a holder riveted on to the full one piece where it's, you know, that full carbon fiber. Um, so, I mean, the skate, <laughs> it, it, it's pretty heavy, which I don't mind in all honesty. Like I, I've got a lighter player skate, which is another true skate, but, uh, but the connectivity of that one piece boot was absolutely insane. Like I was like, do you remember the, the Easton Mako, that, that player skate, that kind of funky looking player skate? You remember those? Was that the one that was like mostly white? It had a little, it was like white and orange. Yeah. Okay. So I think I know which one. Yeah. So, um, 
I actually took that boot and put it into a bow of cowling and I used that skate as a goalie skate for probably almost 10 years. Yeah. And oddly enough, actually, Scott Van Horn with VH and now True, he actually had a say in designing that original skate. So when I wanted to treat myself to new skates, my supervisor at the time was like, F this, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm putting you in a True skate. Like I'm going to scan you and we're going to build you a skate. And within five minutes of skating on those, I was like, oh my God, why didn't I have these things <laughs> earlier? Um, yeah. And then I, and that was a two piece skate with a holder riveted on. And then I switched into the one piece and that was even better. Just, you know, a lot more connectivity and more, um, you know, even less loss of energy transfer, virtually no loss of energy in pushing across. So like you see a lot like, like Bennington, Freddie Anderson, uh, Shesterkin, they're all in that one piece skate and just that connectivity was like, that was, I'd say like, I, I'm, I'm not surprised more goalies aren't in it because, you know, everybody wants that quick change blade or they want the three millimeter blade just for the convenience. But from a, a performance standpoint, standpoint, it's really, really tough. I mean, like, you know, I don't know if you've tried on those connect skates either from Bauer, um, you know, the, the ski boot skate, um, I did yeah. try them out once and like the, the hinge and that was crazy, but I don't know if it's just me. I just kind of like that, that true skate a little bit, you know, like I wish I had them earlier, but that was probably, I'd say as far as like a game changer, you see CCM doing that also with that one piece boot tech. Um, I'm surprised more goalies aren't even in them. Cause yeah, you want all that energy to, for a push across the crease, um, whether it's a minute into the game or, you know, the dying seconds of game seven of the cup final you want that you want that full push yeah i've heard good things about the ankle mobility and the connects for sure mm, yeah yeah uh, i'm gonna have my old man yells at cloud moment but uh <laughs> i was devastated about a year and a half ago when my eight-year-old bauer reactors they split at the boot oh no and i couldn't use them anymore i mean oh. i know like I stopped, I stopped playing, so I only just coached, but yeah. I, I had to go to a, the CCM tax mm -hmm. and um, just how stiff they are, like, because yeah. I was so used to that soft, you know, like, <laughs> yeah, exactly. so I, I now have like, you know, the just above the ankle bone pain all the time when I'm running four or five sessions in a row that I'm like, ah, oh, I miss my old skates. <laughs> exactly. Hey, I mean, in all honesty, I mean, but... I would, I would, I would look into, um, I mean, if you want something softer, probably a jet speed, you know, if, if you are in the market for skates or, uh, true yeah. also just released their, um, the new catalyst line for skates. Um, and even like with guys that I play with or skate with, uh, people that would help out at the store, they would just, I would say, Hey, you know what? Just again, trying everything, you know, whether it's a player skate, a goalie skate, just try these. And, you know, maybe this CCM guy puts on a Bauer skate and you're like, Whoa, this is even better. Or this lifelong Bauer guy puts on a true skate and they're like, Oh my God, the, the difference was, was insane. And I noticed that when I switched into the, into my own custom, uh, with the two piece skate and then <laughs> buying the one piece off of a kid that the kid that I sold them to at the store, you know, we were the same size, just, you know, I rebaked the skate, but the, um, you know, it's, that's why, like, I, I always tell people when they're looking at stuff, just try everything, you know, whether <laughs> yeah. it's, whether it's a skate, you know, big stuff like a skate or like pads, but even like a, like a knee pad, uh, suspenders, like smaller stuff like that, like just try everything. Cause you might you might have never worn a suspender in your life, and then you you get the pro lace one, and you're like, "Oh my god, this is the it's amazing!" You know, yeah, it's the one. It's yeah. why I always tell everybody just try everything because you might find something yeah. you like. Yeah, for sure. I've been thinking I might have to make the transition to player skates now that I'm just coaching, <laughs> but I haven't skated in player skates since I was about eight, so over. 20 years just now, uh and... if there's one <laughs> if if depending on where you know where you're at and um where you can buy your stuff uh i know with monkey we went all pro sharp uh through bauer so if you end up buying a pair of skates just throw a you know get that you know like a, a goalie profile on like that 27 foot yeah. so it's it's not rockered like a player skate you'll have a lot more yeah. blade like you are a goalie skate but uh but you know it's 
I can coach in both, but you know, for guys that are strictly goalies and they only wear goalie skates, if they are going to wear player skates, <laughs> and even too, if your yeah. player skaters profile your steel, don't go sharp on them at all. Like unless your goalies, you know, go sharp on them. <laughs> for me, I'm a three quarter guy. It's mainly on how stiff the skate is, but my player skates, I'm at an inch because my skates are way too stiff, and I don't want them. Uh, you know, I don't want to drag around. Uh, the ice because uh my skates are too sharp but profile your steel it helps yeah for sure well we'll wrap things up here so we'll kind of get uh you know one tip that you have for the goalies out there and uh and uh what you think you know would be most beneficial for them to wrap up here oh um most beneficial sheesh <laughs> um it doesn't have to be uh, gear related yeah, if you um, want just yeah whatever you got for us your um, one nugget of wisdom um take take inspiration from your favorite goalies and make it work for you nobody in the world is there's only one andre vasileski there's only one <laughs> uh uc saros there's only one uh thatcher demko there's only one jake ottinger take everything that you like out of these goalies make it your own because again there's only one of those people and it's not you <laughs> you can take little bits of things like you know and work towards it you know if you want the flexibility of a 2012 jonathan quick or a andre vasileski stretch you know do yoga you know do everything that you can to get your body to be able to do those things because we both know as goalies I'm 30 and my knees feel 60 because of, you know, the wear and tear on my body. But don't try and be your favorite goalie. Look up to him and, he's, and even too with gear. Just because Andre Vasilevsky is a bower guy doesn't mean you're a bower guy. Uh, I was a Marty Berder guy. Mm -hmm. I never I never tried, but, you know, the Clinton CCM stuff. I was always a Reebok guy. And it's the stuff worked for me. I tried other brands and it didn't work for me. But... Don't be your heroes, but take a little bit of your favorite goalies and bring that into your game or um, uh, where else I could go with that. But don't be your hero, but take the inspiration and make yeah. it work for you. Perfect. No, that's awesome. Well, we appreciate you uh, coming on with us. There's a lot of good stuff today. Thanks for joining us and uh, and we'll chat soon. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, if uh if people have questions, uh they could uh they could shoot me a follow on Instagram. It's uh Ray Strums with a Z. Uh or um I also have a sharpening page uh for my business, uh that's Ray Sharpens also with a Z. Um I you know, talk to me about sharpenings, profiling, gear sizing, whatever it is, um and I will gladly try and uh, you know, help you out. And for us Canadians, it's with the Z. That's the Z. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. All right. Thanks so much, Ray. And we'll uh we'll put all of that in the show notes for you guys. You can uh you can find that in the description and we'll uh yeah, we'll have you on at some point again to talk uh talk some new releases maybe in the future. But yeah, we'll, absolutely. Uh, we'll, can, we'll, can I make we'll can I make one soon. can I make oh. one last plug real quick? This yeah. episode this episode was brought to uh to you guys by uh Pro Stock Sticks, uh based in Winnipeg. <laughs> um they did my custom sticks for my wedding. They've got nice. 150 different curve options and colorways and you can <laughs> get some fun stuff. They don't do goalie sticks yet, but you know, this uh he'll he'll love the plug there, but uh shout out Pro. Yeah. Geppetto. There you go. We'll have to uh <laughs> we'll have to set up a, a referral commission or something for you for Absolutely. <laughs> for Absolutely. any sales. <laughs> yes yep awesome <laughs> all right thanks a lot ray hey thanks for having me